before we get to some audience questions, I, I did want to share something you didn't touch on. I wanna, don't want to make you talk too much, but we have two really mm -hmm. cool artifacts that are on mm -hmm. or props on loan to us uh, from Eon Productions. And they're not on display in the museum yet. They're both from No Time to Die. And I didn't, and you do touch on both of these um, in your book. I didn't know if you had any super fast comments you'd like to make about the, the eyeball or the EMP Omega watch. Uh, the eyeball, it's um, an intriguing device. I, I think you probably, certainly the technology exists that uh, would make that eyeball work. Whether you can pack it all into something the size of an eyeball, I'm not sure. But I can go with that one. The EM pulse from the watch, I do have scientific issues with um, because EM pulses, you need atomic bombs to generate those things. And I don't think you can fit an atomic bomb in a watch. And I certainly wouldn't want to be wearing one when it goes off. Uh, I also don't understand how it affects certain electronics selectively. So it affects the CCTV, it affects uh, the bionic eye that the henchman is wearing, but it doesn't affect the earpiece that uh, Bond is using to communicate with Q. So maybe knowing that he was going to give an EM what the impulse watch to Bond, he's got special electronics that aren't affected by this. But yeah, I, that is a lot of technology to pack into a watch. Um, I, that's dubious in my opinion. Well, if anyone can do it, we know Q could do it. Absolutely. We have a, we have a question that you do a great job covering in the book. I bet you're not going to be surprised, but certainly the question, could you really die from being covered in gold? Potentially, yes, but not in the way that it's described in the film or the book. So the, the film just takes it straight from the book. So the idea is that uh, this unfortunate woman who is covered in gold paint, uh, she dies of skin suffocation. Now, your skin is a remarkable organ. It is certainly true that it absorbs oxygen through the skin. Uh, it is about 2%. The other 98% goes in through your lungs and you can cope perfectly well with 98% of your oxygen intake. Losing 2% is not gonna do you a great deal of harm. However, if this paint or gold or whatever it actually is blocks the pores in your skin, that is a problem because it's not just oxygen that goes through the skin, it's also water and sweat. And the evaporation of sweat is how you control your core temperature. And if that gets above about 42 degrees C, I, I can't do the conversion to Fahrenheit, it's about 110 plus. Um, if it gets too high, basically your cells start dying. So some brilliant physicists actually did the calculations and they figured out how much heat uh, this particular woman would have been generating and how much of it would have been trapped because it, you can't evaporate your sweat. And they reckon she had about six hours to die. Now, six hours is an awful long time to be unconscious. <laughs> um, it's an awful long time for Bond to be unconscious because he's been knocked out by odd job in the kitchen. He needs some medical attention as well. But that's plenty of time for you to wake up, feel a bit hot and shower off the gold paint. So, uh, yes, it's plausible, not how they described and certainly not within the time frame that is practical for the film. But it's a film. They can speed things up. <laughs> Um, great question about um, whether you know if uh, Eon Productions reaches out to science advisors. Honestly, don't know. Uh, pass. I certainly know that they have contacted certain experts in, in the past, knowing that they were going in a certain direction. One of the uh, two examples I can think of off the top of my head, one is from Moonraker, the film I mentioned earlier, those shuttles that Hugo Drax is using to take his beautiful people to his secret spice, uh, space station lair. Those shuttles really were based on the NASA shuttles. And they got to show the world 
NASA's shuttles before NASA revealed them. Because of technical difficulties, the film was released. There were problems with launches. And it was, I think, two years after the film that the public saw the shuttles from Moonraker for real blasting into space. And of course, you only get that sort of information if you're talking to NASA. Um, the other example is uh, A View to a Kill, the idea of using explosives to along for, uh, along the fault lines in California to sink uh, Silicon Valley. Yes, it is possible to trigger earthquakes uh, with blasts on the scale that uh, they're suggesting in the film, maybe not. Uh, but again, based on some solid science, they've just taken it and run with it, which is fair enough. Again, it's a film. Now, you mentioned cyanide earlier, and um, poisoning is, is something we certainly cover at the museum. And um, for a while, we did have Silva's teeth on display <laughs> from skyfall and they were as dreadful as you can oh, think God. so did you want to tie we don't have much time but i always love to squeeze in one last question if you'd like to talk about cyanide okay very quickly cyanide is a genuine uh thing that was given to people who uh, especially in the second world war who were flying into dangerous missions and they gave them cyanide, they called them L-pills, and it was because it's very fast acting and it meant that they would not divulge information uh, too quickly. So they are a genuine thing. Cyanide, however, will not do what it does to Raoul uh, Silver in this particular film. All of that destruction of the jaw and the bone, no, no. <laughs> that is um, I, I really felt on on that uh, in Skyfall, I was watching a horror movie for a second with yeah. that. Was... I understand why they did it, because for that moment, you actually have sympathy for the bad guy, and it's M who is the villain. And that's a very interesting thing to have in the film. But in terms of the science, no, that is not how cyanide works. <laughs> Well, Catherine, I think I could talk to you all afternoon, but I'm not going to put you through that. I want to <laughs> thank you. But when you come to D.C., I will ask you to visit us and, and show off all the things that relate to your book. We even had a Komodo dragon in our lobby. Oh, from, wow. That was, that was one of the, the great prop dragons from, not a live from one. the movie. Not alive when it was one that was used in in the movie crawling up the wall and and I, I rather miss him so thank you so much for this incredible talk uh for a wonderfully fun book to read um it should go on holiday shopping lists for anybody who is a bond fan um thank you Catherine, so much and i just want to remind everybody we have lots of programs for people of all ages you can check them out on our calendar the next one is going to be about real spies, though Catherine did a good job of connecting this to reality, and that is going to be the CIA at 75, looking back, looking ahead on Wednesday evening, December 7th. So sign up for that, and if you loved this program, uh, please consider making a, a donation to the Spy Museum. Our donors make these events possible, along with community outreach, exhibit improvements, maintenance of our collection, and other things so secret we can't tell you. Not really, not really. Thank you so much, everyone. Stay well.